Today I'm gonna go. I'm going to show you how to um, transfer the loads or calculate the loads and transfer them from slab to beam, beam to girder, if any, and girder to column as part of ABC civil engineering series. Okay, so we have assumed that we have this section of a slab here. I'm I'm gonna show you only for one floor because it's just um, a matter of getting the idea how to do it. So this is the slab section. We have concrete. We have mortared concrete. We have tiles. We have gravel, we have false ceiling, and AC ducts here. Okay, fine. So these are the questions. We have a dead load one kilonewton per meter square, life load two kilonewton per meter square, and we have the beam and column section sizes here, right? Okay. So the first before before answering the questions, so here's the here's the idea. We usually transfer the load as shown here. From slab, it goes to beam, and from beams into girders, if any. Here we don't have any girders. And from girders into columns as reactions. And then from columns into, if you want to add this, into foundation, footings. Okay, so starting with this. Each material, guys, here should have a unit rate, what we call density. So let's say the mortar has 20 mm. Its thickness is 10 mm. And it has a density, 10 mm is the thickness. And its density is 20, 20 kilonewton per meter cube. The normal density of concrete that we should know is 22 to 24. I'm going to use 24. It's even 22 to 26 kilonewton per meter cube. AC usually it's given as lump sum, which is 0 0.1 kilonewton per meter square, right? So the tiles will have 20 mm. The thickness is written here for concrete, 200 mm. The tiles, let's say, the tiles, uh, let's take 20 mm as a thickness, 20 mm. And it has a density of 22 kilonewton of course, per meter cube. The gravel uh, is usually, has a, of course, has density as well. The gravel is 17, let's take it as 17 kilonewton. Where is it here? 17 kilonewton per meter cube. And density for gravel is 12 mm. Uh, the thickness, sorry. That's the density already. Uh, the false ceiling, if we got the false ceiling, let's take it as, Sorry, the gravel, I said 120 mm. The false ceiling is 12 mm thickness, and its density is only 0 0.2 kilometer per meter cube. Now we can start calculating what's dead load life load on one meter strip of a slab. So starting with the dead load. So we have one, which is given here, plus starting from the concrete, 24 is the unit rate kilonewton per meter cube multiply by 0 0.2 the thickness plus again starting with concrete 20 is the density multiply by 0 0.01 is the thickness plus AC duct is lump sum 0 0.1 you add it as it is plus uh, the tiles we have 0 0.02 which is the thickness multiply by 22 which is the density plus 17 kilonewton per meter cube for the gravel multiplied by 120, which means 0 0.12 m, m, uh, meters. And then eventually have plus the false ceiling, which is how much 0 0.2 is the density, multiplied by 0 0.012 is the thickness. This will give me the total weight. So if you do the math, total weight will be 7.5 I guess 7.558 yes 7.58 oh no no with the one it will be sorry it will be 8.58 8.58 kilonewton per meter square that's the dead load and the life load is fixed 2 kilonewton per meter square if you want to multi to, to do it as one meter strip you just multiply by one meter so let's do it here on the side. 
So the dead load will be total dead load on a, on a slab for one meter strip is 8.58 multiplied by one. That will give me 8.58 kilonewton meter. Same for the life load. Right? Uh, actually, this is one way slab. All of it here. Okay. Sorry. Then number two is let's talk about now transferring the load from the beam to this from the slab to the beam which is along let's choose a beam which is along x p b so this beam so i'm gonna draw here for for demonstration so we, there's something called tributary area and we mean by that is that this beam is gonna take this much area of load okay so that means this beam is going to take half of this distance, which is 3, and half of this distance, which is 2.5. Total is 5.5. So this distance is taken, by, is taken by all the loads are transferred to this beam. Okay, so let's transfer the loads. First, we have to start with loads coming from the slab, which is this. So it's 8.58. That's the dead load, dead load multiplied by 5.5 which is the tributary area, which is this one here, if you add these two numbers. This will give me a total dead load on the slab, which is 47 point, on the beam, sorry, 47.2 kilonewton meters, right? 8.58 kilonewton per meter square multiplied by 5.5. This will give me 47.2 kilonewton meter dead load. Okay, so what about the life load? Life load will be two, multiply by 5.5 and this will give me 11 kilonewton per meter okay but we forgot one thing guys to for, to the dead load we should add also the beam on weight so let's say so going back to the dead load beam on weight will be the unit rate of concrete 24 which is density multiply the beam section which is shown here 250 mm so multiply by 0 0.25 square. This will give me on weight of the beam. Okay, so I have to add this to the dead load. So the total dead load will be 47.2 plus, if you do the math here, for 24 multiplied for 0 0.25 square plus 1.5 kilonewton per meter. And this will give me 48.7 kilonewton meter. So to understand this, I'm going to draw how does, how does it look like now. We have a beam here, which is BB. Okay. Let's call, let's call these columns here. So it's the grid B1. So let's call it B1. Let's call it here B2, B3, B4. So we have the first reaction here, which is B1, right? Then we have another reaction, B2, B3, and B4. Okay, since we have this, of course, we have the distances here, 5.5, 5, and 4.5. I'm not going to draw it here. Um, 5, 5.5, 5, 5, 5, and then 4.5. And then we have the load that is distributed, dead load and life load, which are these two numbers, these two numbers. So in order to transfer, which is number three now, we're working on B2. So we are interested in this B2, this column. In order to transfer the beam loads into the column, let's choose another color here. We need to calculate just the reaction here, right? And since it's distributed load, we just can take the, actually the distance, distance here, this is 5.5 we said, right? So it's 5.5, this is 5, 4.5, let me draw it. So for explanation, I'm gonna take this distance. This is the reaction which is, is gonna be, is going to be taken by the column. 
all right so this column will be responsible for this much of tributary area this column will be responsible only for this so this distance is half of 5.5 .5 plus half of the 5 so 5.5 .5 over 2 plus which is this half of this distance plus 5 over 2 which is equal to 5.25 so to calculate here what's the load transferred to this column only and so number three is here actually for better demonstration so this is what we're looking for the columns taking half of this beam just the tributary area guys but since the load is only transferred from the beam so it's transferred as like like a line load to a point point load here so this will be 5.25 which is the distance that we just shown show you here multiplied by load coming from the beam 48.7 okay plus the own weight of the column which is 0.25 section size 0.25 multiplied by 0.3 multiplied by its length let's say 3 meters multiplied by the unit weight if you do the math that's dead load that's dead load calculation so dead load will be equals to 261 kilo newton that's point load and the life load is just simply equals to 5.5 .5 multiplied by 11 which is the load coming from the life load here from the beam and this will give me 57.8 kilonewton as a point load